So now, amidst the rubble, law enforcement agencies are in a new race against time to find the people who did this. As the day wears on, no confirmation is given to reporters about the cause of the blast, but officials do not hide their strong suspicions. We'll uh, give you a certain conclusion when we can prove it. it. Looks like a bomb, it smells like a bomb, it's probably a bomb. A group of investigators is assigned to work inside the crater created by the bomb. NYPD Detective Donald Sadawi and ATF agent Joe Hanlon are assigned to the same team. It was a survey mission. We also had the mission to attempt to take swabbings that could be taken back to the laboratory later that day and examined to possibly get a lead on the type of explosive that was used. We didn't know who had perpetrated the bombing. Uh, people were scared. Uh, the city was scared. It was the start of a new phenomenon. It wasn't something that just happened in, in London or Beirut or the Philippines. It could happen any place. Finding clues amid the rubble would be next to impossible. The first major breakthrough in the investigation came when uh, FBI agents at the scene of Ground Zero discovered part of the vehicle chassis the, the van that had been used to transport the bomb into the building. Miraculously, the VIN, or Vehicle Identification Number, is still legible on the manifold. The FBI then traces the van's registration to a rider rental agency in New Jersey. The van was the same vehicle rented and reported stolen by Mohammed Salome. My beeper went off and it was uh, Detective Napoli calling me and he said, you go, you know, I called the number and he said, you're not going to believe it, but they found the... Uh, the remnants of the of the van that was used to carry the explosives and it was rented in Jersey City and it was a rider company you know and the person who rented it was uh, Mohammed Salome and I mean I tell you I was like oh my god Mohammed Salome we got photographs of Mohammed uh, we have photographs of Mohammed training uh, at the range you know He's a friend of Nocer, he's a friend of all the guys that we've been looking at for the last few years. And I said, uh oh, you know, we, we, you know, these are the guys we were looking at. Salome arrives at the rental office in New Jersey to pick up his $400 deposit on the van. When he arrives, an agent greets Salome from behind the desk. But he is not a rider agent. He's an undercover agent with the FBI. After some discussion, Salome walked out. As he stepped out of the office, Dozens of FBI agents who had been monitoring their discussion descended upon Salome. Less than one week after the bombing, the FBI had a suspect in custody. Salome said little to the agents who questioned him about the bombing. They knew it was probable that he had not acted alone. The FBI was staking out the lot when Salamu showed up with his stolen vehicle report this morning, this time getting his $200 then walking outside. And they must have signaled other guys the up the street, morning. and there were FBI guys on both sides of Kennedy Boulevard, and they pulled up in a car, FBI guys with their jackets, and put them in a car. Put them in the car. And that was the end away. of it. It was no, not, it was nothing like not that I could see. You I didn't see. see I didn't hear any, I was right outside. I didn't hear any fighting or anything. I think they surprised him. Uh, he came back a number of times. He came back uh, Friday afternoon and told me that uh, the truck was stolen from his possession. He wanted, his deposit. he wanted his deposit back. Sources tell Fox News the FBI has been conducting searches all over Jersey City, one of them at this apartment building. Gladys Moore, who lives here with her Egyptian boyfriend, says FBI agents broke down her door and ransacked her apartment. Oh, they took a piece of my hair, and they put some things in my hands, and they took a test, they sent it out, they came back and they said I could go. When Salome was arrested, agents recovered various personal items, including his wallet, which contained several business cards and telephone numbers. They began by searching the address listed on his driver's license. A former roommate told agents that Salome no longer lived at that address. However, they were able to find some belongings of Salome's that he had left behind. There were news clippings and photos relating to Nocer, and a photo of him and Nocer together. There were numerous bank records. There were also more names and numbers for investigators to pursue. Analysis of all the confiscated phone records led investigators to an apartment in Jersey City. The landlord who owned the apartment at 40 Pemrapo Avenue confirmed that Salome and another individual rented the apartment from early January of 1993 until the end of February. A landlord could not confirm the identity of Salome's roommate 
After executing the warrant, agents discovered that 40 Pemrapo Avenue was the bomb factory, the place where the conspirators mixed an explosive powerful enough to rock the World Trade Center. Inside the apartment and an adjacent garage, FBI forensic examiners recovered traces of a diverse range of chemicals. While agents searched the apartment, the identity of Salome's mysterious roommate emerged. They found papers requesting political asylum in the name of Ramsey Yosef, who, according to the documents, had been detained in September of 1992 at Kennedy Airport for entering the country without a visa. The Pam Rappo Avenue apartment was a gold mine for the FBI. At every step of the investigation, Ramsey Yosef's name appeared. He was a known international terrorist and an expert with explosives. They soon learned that he fled the country the night of the Trade Center bombing. The international manhunt for Ramsey Yusuf will take place in the coming days as the authorities further puzzle who was all involved in the bombing. But for Iyad Ishmoel, rather than return to Houston, Texas where he resided and had been living in the United States for several years, Ishmoel took Yusuf's lead and fled the country soon after to his homeland in Jordan. But Mahmoud Abu Halima, aka The Red, would briefly meet up with another associate, the Sudanese Siddig or Siddiq Ibrahim Siddig Ali, also tied in with the Moss and the Blind Sheik's inner circle, and about to become an active participant in further terrorist plots in the months to come. But Abu Halima reportedly fled back to Egypt as soon as news surfaced of Mohammed Salome's arrest. 